Welcome to Significant TV, Significant Stories, Significant Entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me in the studio today is Melanie Sally Dosimu, and she is CEO of Precision Talent International. Melanie, welcome to the show. Thank you, Fran. It's very nice to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for taking the trip and making the trip. Melanie, first of all, I want to open with the fact that we have been friends for years. Yes. We were part of a professional association, and um, you have always been in the service business, the learning business, the helping people improve and be engaged. And so it's wonderful to see you move into entrepreneurship. Welcome. Well, thank you. I, you know, it's really exciting. I've, I've been doing the work for over 25 years. I started as an infant, of course. Of course, but yes, <laughs> yes. It's fascinating what children do these e days. Exactly. <laughs> so, but, but to be able to share my talent, share my expertise with a multitude of businesses and organizations, it's just really exciting. I just you know, feel that I can help so many more people grow and develop and reach their potential. Mm -hmm. So I'm really enjoying this thing. Thing. Good. And you, before I ask you about your personal story, you chose the name of your business very intentionally. Can you kind of walk us through Precision Talent International? I certainly did. I, you know, there are specific skills, specific tools that leaders can demonstrate that make a big difference in the growth of the organization. And so if they, those tools are selected and used with precision, it drives growth, uh -huh. it drives uh, productivity, Activity, and it drives employee engagement. So that's where that part of the name com came from. And the international piece of my business name is because I've been all over the world. I have delivered leadership training on almost every continent in wow. so many different countries and it's been really exciting. And what I've learned is there's a, there is, while the, while cultural the cultural approach does make an impact on how someone may use a tool. The same skill sets, the same tools are, are effective all over the world. Talk to us a little bit about your international travel. I mean, when you say that you've been on almost, on almost every continent, um, what kind of work did you do? So um, in China, I've been, I went to um, Beijing um, as well as um, um, I've also been to, well, Beijing was the first place I went, and I did a train the trainer there. Mm -hmm. So I worked with scientists and helped them understand how to break their training down using brain science and ah. also adult learning methodology mm -hmm. so that the sales reps that they were training would actually have useful tools and useful um, approaches in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So that helping them to uh, con convert their training so that you know it's a little bit more user friendly oh, a little bit more sense. learner cent centered so that's what I did in China in China um, have you been on the continent of Africa I have mm -hmm. so um, I was in South Africa and it was very cool because I got a chance to do a safari there Ooh. but uh, yeah it's very cool uh -huh. <laughs> but what I did in South Africa was to help with leadership development I, I went into an organization that provides um, pharmaceutical across the country, across the um, country of South Africa and also the continent of Africa. Mm -hmm. And I worked with their leaders to help them build their leadership skill so that they could learn how to better connect with their um, team members and help to develop talent within the organization. Mm -hmm. There was a challenge in that particular organization with succession planning. Mm -hmm. So I really, uh, my focus there was to help the leaders to gain the tools that they needed to grow their teams so that they can have more internal development and growth. So I definitely understand Precision Talent International. How about Melanie? How did you make that transition having traveled the world and been involved um, in corporations, being a training leader and developing leaders? How did you make that transition into entrepreneurship? So I, you know, I worked with some some great external consultants when I was mm -hmm. when I was in corporate America. So I worked for a company called Just Born, which uh, that's where um, I met you, right? Right. <laughs> and I met some great consultants who came in and had a huge impact in a really short time. They they made it look easy, and so did you. <laughs> um, they also 
uh, I, the impact that they were able to make, I, it just really gave me a desire to mm -hmm. be able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've had that desire for a long time. And then when I was in my last job, there was a reorganization that really impacted my job mm -hmm. and made it necessary for me to, uh, to do something different. And I mm -hmm. tell you what, that was the right. best opportunity that I could mm -hmm. have received because that was the opportunity to step out on my own. They actually became my first client and my Whoa. largest client. Congratulations. Thank wow. you. It was, it was just very exciting. But it was, you know, through necessity, mm -hmm. but it was a really exciting opportunity to step into entrepreneurship mm. which I've wanted to do for a while right right yeah. so now you're an entrepreneur who are your clients now and and how do they work with you so my um, most popular most common type of a client is a mid-size organization either um, corporations I also work with nonprofits and and even churches mm -hmm. but it's a kind of a mid-size company a company that um, may have a human resources function, but probably don't have specific resources assigned to do training. Okay. And it's okay. a company that cares about employee en engagement. Um, it has a great culture that they want to maintain, mm -hmm. and they want to make sure that their leaders have the skills and the tools to drive a really good culture. Those are my ideal clients because the types of leadership development that I do really drive, it drives results by driving employee engagement. And that's, um, that's the type of skills that I help the leaders to gain. Now, being a training professional, I totally understand employee engagement. Someone else who's an entrepreneur may or may not. What does that mean and what does that mean for businesses? I mean, why does it matter? You know what, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. um, employee engagement is, is having employees ready to come to the table and bring discretionary effort. Uh, people know their job huh. description. As a rule, people know their job description. They mm -hmm. know what's required. But mm -hmm. an engaged employee will come to the table, do a little extra. They'll come a little early. They'll do a little extra. They'll have a great attitude about it. Mm -hmm. An engaged employee really cares not just about getting a paycheck, but they care about the success of the business, the success mm -hmm. of their boss. So it's really a mindset. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? Based on research, there's McKin McKinsey studies out there. Um, hey, McBurr has some data out mm -hmm. there that says that when an employee, when employees are better engaged, the company uh, productivity is better. Mm -hmm. Their results are better. In fact, companies with higher percentages of engaged employees, they far outperform their peers. Oh. So it's definitely worth the investment. And you yes. do this often. In fact, you have customized a workshop around the, on this very topic. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? And you, I think, have some information on that. I certainly do. I'd be yeah. happy to do that. I'll just okay. share yeah, really right. quickly. Okay, excellent. So the title of the workshop is? It's Full Engagement, mm -hmm. Management Conversations That Drive Performance and Results. Okay. And so what um, my research has uncovered um, is that there are seven conversations, seven conversations that really drive engagement. Mm -hmm. And a lot okay. of times leaders don't know to, to have these conversations or they don't know how to have these conversations. Mm -hmm. For example, the first conversation is the context setting conversations. Okay. People are much more engaged when they understand the context of their job and how it impacts the strategy of the organization. Oh, of course. You know, it's the why. It's the why. Why am I doing this? It, You're asking me to do this. And if I don't do it, does it matter? But if you tell me the why, it matters. It okay. matters, exactly. Context. I okay. matter, what I'm doing matters. So on the day to day, I may not feel, for instance, if I'm the receptionist, I may feel like, oh, I'm just answering the phone mm -hmm. calls and yeah. greeting hello. people. Hello, hello, exactly. hello. Exactly. Right. But if I, if my boss takes the time to have that context setting conversation, what I would understand from that is that I am the face of the organization. That's right. Everyone who walks in the door experiences the culture of the organization. Through, that's right. <laughs> I matter. What right. I do matters. The way I answer the phone matters. So if a, if a supervisor, if a manager, if a leader takes the time to help me understand the context of my job, Boy, am I more engaged. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's one example. Okay. There are seven. There are seven. Oh, yes. wow. This is a teaser. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have to ask this. Now I'm really engaged. How can people find out about the workshop? 
So they can go to my website, which okay. is www.precisiontalentinternational.com. Okay. And there's um, quite a bit of information there about the workshop. We offer it as a public workshop. So if an organization, if there's a leader who wants to go, they just, I need to find out how to get my folks engaged, and they will find that out. Yeah, okay. If they'd like to come, they can register for a public workshop. Mm -hmm. Or there may be a leader that says, hey, my company needs to, to figure out what we can do. Mm -hmm. They can call me and we can customize it to meet their mm. needs specifically. Okay. And, and that makes a lot of sense because there may be some good things going on in the organization. There might have been some changes. There might be some things that aren't so good. And by having a customized workshop, then it really is all about them and helping them drive their specific performance and results. Absolutely. Mm. And the first step in the process is to do a needs assessment to help mm -hmm. get a sense for where do they already excel, okay. which conversations do they need to focus on, you know, what types of um, practice do they need, and what types mm -hmm. of post-training support do they need. Because part of this workshop is providing a toolkit so mm -hmm. that after I leave, Okay. They still have what they need to continue ah, to grow, continue to learn, helpful. and continue to build the skills. Mm. What do you love most about this? I mean, I can tell you're very passionate, so that's obvious, but what do you love most about what you do and this whole concept of employee engagement? So I tell you, Fran, what really <laughs> floats my boat okay. is when I'm sitting in a classroom or, you know, I'm facilitating in a classroom and I have this leader in front of me who um, is a little bit nervous about giving feedback or just mm -hmm. petrified to confront poor performance. Mm -hmm. And so they learn this, this skill, they learn the tool, and they're sitting in a role play and I can see the light bulb goes off in their head mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they're, they're practicing this, this um, conversation and they see that they can do it. Uh, They're actually getting good at it. Mm -hmm. And when you see the light bulb goes go off in that person's head and you know, now, I feel like I got I had some small mm -hmm. role to play in, in that mm -hmm. in seeing them grow. Because they can use these conversations at work, they can use them at home, they That's can right. use them at church, wherever they are, these mm -hmm. conversations serve them. So to see someone grow, pick up the skill, the light bulb goes off, it is so rewarding to me. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what really charges me up. Mm -hmm. When people walk out of my training sessions, I know they have new skills, they have new opportunities, they have new approaches to, the, uh, fresh approaches that will make them even more successful. Your energy is really infectious. It's contagious. Well, thank you. Um, I, I, I love it. I want people to, again, know how to get in touch with you. And I'd love for you to leave folks with a tip that they can begin to use right now. So those two things before we close out. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, I'll start with a tip. Okay. And I will say that one of the most important things we can do as a leader is when we give feedback, that it's important that that feedback is specific Mm. that you are, when you give feedback, you're focused on a behavior. You're focused on a specific performance issue. Whether mm. that is corrective feedback or positive feedback, it okay. needs to be really specific. It needs to be timely, as soon as possible, okay. as practical after the mm. event. Mm -hmm. And um, it also should be focused on behavior and focused on a person's ability to improve. So I actually have a model that I teach to help people to do that very easily. But I, I think using effective feedback, whether it's at home, whether it's at work, any part of your life with your kids, it can That's really improve your effectiveness as a leader, as an employee, as a parent, as a person. That's wonderful. And where can folks get in touch with you? www.precisiontalentinternational.com. Thank you, Melanie. This has been great. Significant stories, significant entrepreneurs, significant performance and results. Thank you, Melanie, for being a guest on the show. Thank and you, And viewers, continue to follow us as we interview 80 entrepreneurs in the Philadelphia area.